Welcome back to new freebie Fridays. Also in this video, I'm not only sharing the freebie, but I am sharing a tutorial on how you can make these. Because I was trying to the other day, just thinking about how this could be done and I managed to pull it off. Now you'll see here is an adjustment click and on a fusion composition and you will see why in a second. We have our main clip here and we don't want to create this fusion or title inside this. And if we put this fusion composition on top, we cannot really add a tracker to follow things around because it doesn't go, it doesn't act like an adjustment clip. The adjustment clip basically takes into account this background too, as if we go here to opening the fusion page, you will see the media one here is why we have that here. And it's also the reason why the trackers here are are in this first part and not after here, because otherwise, if you put them after, they will not detect the background or whatever is under your adjustment click. I am going to try to make these into a macro in the future, so it's a little bit easier, but for time sakes, I'm not, I'm just going to make the adjustment click available for download at first. And then when I create the macro, I will let you know. Okay. Now in this case, we're going to create a new one and we're just going to copy the same video here that we have. And we have an adjustment click here. And again, you always have to go here to adjustment click and drag one here. And before going into it, you actually want to drag these here and you can actually just name these, whatever you want. We're going to name it code and then we're going to bring that back inside. The reason for that is that if you don't do that, when you go into the adjustment click here, if we open infusion, you will see these numbers being really high and it's not that easy to work with in that case. And sometimes the tracker can get messed up when you try to go that way. Okay. Let's just build our call out title. First thing we want to do is we're going to add a text here and we're going to add a background note to it or text, we can name these call out title, just call out. It doesn't really matter. Now we're not using the shading section of the text to create the background of it. We will use a polygon because that will make it easier to animate things. And now when you want to edit it, it's a little bit, a few more steps, but, but it's not a big of a deal. Okay. So we have our text here right in the middle. In the other case, in the example that you saw, I made the anchor of the text be on the side because I first, I only connected one of the lines polygons. Then I wanted to see if I could actually connect two of them. And then I did. So let me just show you with one first. So first we're going to create our background in this case, and we're going to make this a little bit bigger. And you also have to go and make sure that this green one is on the text. So the foreground is the text, press control T with the merge node there, and we'll have that pretty much fixed. Now in this case, I don't want it to be black, so I'm going to change these to like a grayish, and I'm going to decrease the opacity so that it, we can still see the background and we're going to change the text color to black. So it stands out a little bit more and we have that first part ready. Now for the next part, we want to add a second background and we're going to connect these here to the merge node. And on this one, we're going to create the polygon lines that are going to go to our color text. Now, if you want, you can point them out to be right here in the center. It doesn't matter. We're going to fix that in a second and I'll show you how you can do that. We can also increase the border width a little bit and we're going to change the color of these to white. Now here in this polygon, what we want to do first is we're going to hold control and then selecting both points. We're going to right click, go down here to polyline and we're going to select publish to points. You will see point zero is the top one and point one is the one at the bottom. Sometimes it's the opposite way around. So you just got to bear that in mind. Okay. We have that there. Also again, make sure that this one is on the background because otherwise it's going to show up on top of our cloud and that doesn't look that great. Since our text is aligned right at the center and we have our polygon starting here too. What we can do is we're going to add a transform node right here. And we're going to go to the center and we're going to right click and we're going to, and we're going to publish this here on our polygon. We're going to grab the point zero, which is the one there. And we're going to right click and we're going to connect these to the transform center. That way, we, if we want to move these and position it somewhere right here, for example, they, the polygon will just become longer 
and follow the path of where our callout is. Now for the next point is where we're gonna have to use our tracker. For this, we're gonna go here and select the media in, just press control and spacebar or shift spacebar. Sometimes it's different in some computers. And here we're gonna add a tracker. On this tracker here, we can just go and select the object that we wanna find. You can see it on screen here. And right now the screen is getting cut because of the playback is set to have resolution. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna position this here and use this as a guide. Okay, we got that in place and we're gonna track this. Okay, it doesn't have to be the whole composition long right now because these will really depend on the footage that you use. So you will have to replace these and I'm gonna clean it up before you can, so that you don't have this when you download it. Now this is by default, it's gonna be published already. So you don't have to worry about going to like the transform node. So we're gonna just right click here, point one, and we're gonna connect these to the tracker, tracker path and position. So now when things are moving, both of them are gonna be following the same path. You can also adjust the opacity of these so it sort of matches this one that we have up here. Otherwise it can look a little bit odd. And if you want them to match out correctly, the easiest way is actually just copy these and paste this. And then we're gonna replace that call out with this one. And now they're both basically the same color. Okay, now the, the color of it really, it's up to you. You can adjust these however you want and you can experiment and explore it. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is actually animate things. The first thing we're gonna animate is this line. For that, we're gonna decrease the length. And if that is the case that the length is actually going the opposite way, you're gonna animate the position. Here, we're gonna create a keyframe at zero, and then we're gonna go to like frame 12 or 15, 16, maybe it doesn't really, it's up to you. We're gonna create that there. We're gonna go to frame five, and we're gonna create a keyframe for the border width, and then we're gonna go to zero and make the border width zero. That way we're gonna see that little dot or the point first growing, and then our position will become longer. So for that, we're gonna, we have to go to frame 15 again and make these zero. So if we look at it, we'll see that see it that way now it's growing at the same time right now so we're gonna go is we're gonna go to the position again select these and we're gonna drag these so that it starts at frame five then you will see this moving or growing like that at frame frame 15 it ends reaches that point and at that point we want these to this other one to grow for that we're gonna decrease the length again Similar to the other one, we're gonna do the same process. For that, we're gonna go to the border width, go a few frames forward, add another keyframe, make this zero, so it grows there, and then we're gonna animate the length. A few frames till it shows up, and then the last thing, once it reaches that point, we're gonna animate our text, and for that, we're just gonna animate the position, a few frames, Make the first one become, come from a little bit lower. We're gonna go to the shading section. We're gonna go to opacity, make this zero. And then on the same frame here, we're gonna bring this to one. Now we have this issue of it showing up under it or outside of it. For that, we're just gonna simply connect this polygon to the text. And now that won't be an issue anymore. Now it's bothering me a little bit that our polygon here is getting to the center. So for that, I'm actually gonna bring this point to be at, in the center. So for that, we're gonna publish this point so we can see these. And we're gonna set these to 0.5 and 0.5. The other, the other point, we can actually just move this around. Now we can select the other point and try to align it so it's straight. If you don't wanna have to do it manually, just right click and you can publish this point also. And we can see here the width or the Y value and it's gonna be 0.5 and that will be a perfect line. Now here's where, where I mentioned earlier that we you can edit things later. And first we're gonna bring our text a little bit to the side here so that there's a little bit of space here. And the thing with this style is that if you add more text, Callout title, for example, you will see it being broken because it goes outside the mask that this polygon gives it. So to fix that, we're gonna bring this point here. You can edit it here, or you can just drag these 
Press shift or hold shift and move your arrow keys to the left until it fits the, the amount of uh, space that it needs. Or you can simply just move these. It's up to you whichever way you go. Now we have our animation done basically. And you will see this one is always constantly following. Now, if you see a few glitches of it jumping, it's all because of the tracker. So you can make sure to click your tracker. And then here you can simply adjust these little points if there is something uh, moving. Now, if you're working with the playback here in half resolution, what happens sometimes is that it will move like you just saw. So you want to make sure to when you're adjusting your tracker to be without with the proxy mode off. Okay, so what is left for now? So the next thing what we can do is actually we can select all of these. Do not select, don't select your tracker. We're gonna go to the spline and we're gonna select everything except the ones that say tracker because we don't wanna animate or smooth in or ease in and out those points. Selecting everything, we can press F and then press T and you can adjust the amount of easing in and out that you have. I almost forgot about the outro animation. So now to create our outro animation, first we're gonna deselect all of them. Just leave them as the dots or you can actually make them disappear like that. Press Control A and drag these by holding Control. Then reverse these and then a few frames forward. Once the title goes down like that, we can go and change the polygon. Now we're going to go to our polygon one here and we have to animate the length. So for that, we're going to go and hold control here and then drag these. Going to find out where the text disappeared first. Which was at frame 120. And we're going to drag all of these, hold and shift. And we're going to reverse this. Now the width also got animated there. We're gonna have to drag these so that after the circle goes to the right, then it becomes smaller. Okay, we have that there. And now we can go to the polygon two, selecting the position and the border width, drag these, holding control, reverse these. And we're also gonna have to adjust the, bring this one to the side a little bit so that it becomes smaller after the whole thing reaches the starting point, which is right here at frame 167. There it will become smaller again. And that is basically how you can create this cool callout title. Now, the link is down in the description. You can go follow that to download, to install it. I think I'm gonna leave a fusion composition So what you will have to do is grab that fusion composition, bring it into a fusion file or an adjustment layer, and it should copy all the structure of the nodes with the animations and everything inside it. So that then you just save that adjustment layer with the name that you want and put it in your power pins. Now, as I said, I will try to turn this into a macro so it's easier to use, but for now, this will have to do. Now, make sure to download it so you can play around, adjust things, and learn a little bit more about the things that you can create here. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.